Hi, this is Matt with AppliancePartsPros.com. Today we'll be showing you how to repair your appliance. Remember, anytime you work on an appliance, make sure it's unplugged or the circuit breakers are off so there's no chance of electrocution. Also make sure you turn off the dishwasher's water supply underneath the sink. In this video we're going to show you how to change out the Whirlpool dishwasher chopper assembly. It's going to be a very easy repair and should only take a few minutes to show you how to do it. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can click on the link below or get it at AppliancePartsPros.com. When you open up the package, you're going to get the new chopper assembly. The chopper assembly goes inside the sump, and as the water goes over the screen, the chopper spins around and cleans the screen off so the water can flow through it. The main reason you'll be changing it out is if the shaft is busted and the filter is getting clogged, reducing your water pressure and the dishes don't get clean. In order to get to the part, we're going to open up the dishwasher door and remove both the racks. To pull the lower one out, we're just going to pull it out and set it aside. To get the upper rack out, we're going to pull these rails out a little bit. And then on the back side of these end caps, there's a little release tab. The one on the other side comes out the exact same way. Now that we have the end caps off, we can pull the upper rack out and set it aside. Now we can take a Phillips screwdriver and remove the screw that holds this plastic tubing to the back wall. Next, we're going to take out the lower spray arm. We're going to grab this big screw and hold on to it. And we're going to turn it clockwise because it has reverse thread. Once the spray arm is released, you can take it out of the dishwasher. Now we can go in and remove the water supply tube. You want to turn it clockwise. And then we can reach in with a small flathead screwdriver and lift up on this locking tab as we turn it so this hose will come out. Once you have them disconnected, then you can continue to turn this tube until you can lift it off the pump. Now that we have the water supply tube out of the way, we can reach in and take out these four screws with our Torque 20 driver. Now that we have all the screws out, we can lift the top of the pump out. Now that we have the cover off, we can use our Torque 10 driver to remove the screw that holds in this plastic assembly. Once you have the screw out, we're going to take a flathead screwdriver and come over on the other side and pop it off a little bit so the tab releases. And then once you have it loose, all you have to do is pull it straight up so the cover comes out. Now that we have the cover off, we can reach down and pull the chopper out. The shaft on the chopper is spring loaded, so you may have to get behind it with a screwdriver to pull it out to disengage it from the motor before you can lift the chopper out. Here's the old chopper assembly next to the new one. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can get it at AppliancePartsPros.com. When you put the chopper in, you want to make sure this smaller cutout is on the bottom. But what we're also going to do is take an 11 16 inch wrench and put it in between the screen and the metal chopper so that the spring loaded shaft is in the short position and it makes it easier to push down. So we're going to put this at 12 o'clock on the wider side and then we're going to lower it down into its slot, then pull the wrench out. Now that we have the new chopper in, we can push the cover back down into place, make sure it locks in, and then we can put the screw in. With the cover on, we can use a little needle nose to put the screw down into the hole. It's kind of hard to get down there with, on the end of a screwdriver. And then we can use our Torque 10 driver to tighten it up. Now we can set the top of the pump housing into place. You want to make sure it goes all the way down and the tube goes into the bottom of the pump. Once you have it in, we can use our Torque 20 driver to put the screws back in. To put this water tube back in, you want to line up the three notches so they go down into the pump body like that. And then you have to kind of lift up on it while you 
get this other side of the tube in there so it goes in properly. You can push them over so they're up at 12 o'clock and make sure that they latch together. Now we can put the spray arm back on. You want to set it down onto the screw part and you want to try to make sure that the start of the thread is right in this little cutout. And remember it's reverse thread so we're going to go counterclockwise to tighten it. If you have to you can grab the screw part of it with your pliers and lift up on it to make sure that that goes above the cutout there. Then you can turn it, tighten it down. Now that we have the spray arm attached, we can put the screw in that holds the water supply tube to the back wall. We can use our Phillips screwdriver to put it in. Now we can put the upper rack back in. All we have to do is line up the wheels and push it back into the rails. Once you have it all the way in, we can pull the support rails out a little bit so we can put the end caps back on. To put the end caps in, all you have to do is slide them down into place so they lock in. The other side goes in the same way. Once you have them both in, you can push the upper rack and the rails back in. Now we can put in the lower rack. All we have to do is set it down on the door and it's track and push it back into place. Once you have it in there, we can close the dishwasher door. Now that you're done repairing the appliance, you can plug it back in, turn the water back on, and take it for a spin. Thanks for joining us for another successful repair brought to you by AppliancePartsPros.com. Check out our other repair videos on our site, Facebook, and YouTube.